huts weren't the only protection that the soldiers had to build while they were encamped here at Valley Forge. Keep in mind, this was actually one of the closest encampments the American army had to the British. The British are only about 20 miles away down in Philadelphia. That's less than a day's march. The Americans were not hiding out here. Both sides knew where the other one was. And so an attack from the British was a very real threat. This camp had to be defended. In order to help defend it, they built miles of entrenchments. Now, most people today, when they think about entrenchments, they usually imagine foxholes that soldiers were built in the field. Or they might think about World War I and the huge trench system that was built on the Western Front. In those, the soldiers are actually in the trench and actually hiding in the trench. That was not the case back in the 1700s. In the 1700s, when you build entrenchments, yes, you dug a trench, but your trench was not your shelter. The shelter is the mound of earth that you're piling up behind the trench. So what you're basically seeing is an earthen fort called a redoubt or redoubt. And this was a square earthen bunker designed to protect one end of this encampment. If the soldiers, if the British were to attack the Americans out here, they would have to march over wide open fields, over hundreds of yards, uphill to attack this position. The trench that the soldiers dug served as a dry moat to slow down attackers as they tried to scramble up this hill and attack the positions. Now today, most of the entrenchments are gone for the same reason that the huts are gone. It, it, all the land was converted back into farmland. There are, however, some areas where the original redoubts and entrenchments still exist, but they look a lot different today than they would have back then. Today, generally what you see are grassy mounds of earth, but the ones that were built back when Washington was here were a lot more sophisticated. Yes, it was earth, but it was earth reinforced with wooden structures. To keep the earth in place, they would use di um, items like this. This is called a gabion. It's basically an 18th century sandbag. You would take a basket like this and fill it up with earth and put it in the ground. And then you would pile one up side by side next to each other, fill it with earth and then cover it up. That is what would keep this mound in place and keep the earth intact. On the inside, they would have set up uh, wooden firing positions for the soldiers to shoot from and positions for artillery and cannon. But of course, over 230, 240 years, all of those wooden structures have rotted and faded away. What we're left with is what you see behind me now, the remnants of the forts that they built here.